Thanks, Peter, for the introduction on training. So on the inference side, oh, we are doing very similar, uh, have very similar practices, but you know, it's just a focus on inference. So as Peter mentioned, we have closed divisions. We have strict rules and focus on apple to apple ML system comparison. And we also have an open division, which have more of the permissive rules and have better, you know, we can use better models and reference. And today's talk, I'm mostly focused on closed division inference, which focus on the apple to apple comparison. And you can read about open division in our GitHub rules as well. Due to the time limit, I will not go there. So first, I want to talk about why do we need mlperf inference. I think everyone, you know, as Peter mentioned before as well, you know, there's a variety of software stack that you can use from very high level ML applications to all the way very low level software like libraries and compilers. So all these components at different layers influence the performance of the ML system in the end. And also on the right, you can see that we have a lot of ML publications being published every year. And there should be a way to meaningfully measure the innovations and try to provide a neutral way to let the system compare performance and have a playing field. Uh, you know, basically, you need an ML perf to level the playing field. So I'll say the state of ben uh, ML benchmarking, maybe before ML perf, you know, there's a lot of apples to oranges comparison, right? Like when you try to compare performance, so let's say the same ResNet 50. Uh, if you just say, oh, I want to know what's the performance of ResNet 50, you know, on, on, let, let, let's say on CPU versus GPU, it's, it's typically a apples to oranges comparison because people, in their own measurement, may use a slightly different variant of model, maybe using different data set, and they use different libraries, and you know some are not optimized. So it's uh, it's hard, hard hard to have really the apple to apple comparison before ML perf. I'm not saying we have completely resolved the problem, but I think ML perf inference has done a great job in you know making the big step in the right direction. So Peter mentioned before, it's a uh, you know ML perf benchmark. Has many people working on it, and also I want to highlight that we have many active participants in the inference working group. So hopefully, the collective knowledge and the wisdom from the community can help us to define better rules and have more apple to apple comparison in this area. So I'm just going to talk about uh, the goals of ML perf. I think Peter also mentioned that, but I think these are very important points that I, you know, it's worth a while for me to mention again. First, we want to reinforce our rep replicability to ensure reliable results. So all the amount of entries have all the code and steps to reproduce the results. And since we have friendly competition in the benchmark community, some of the, uh, you know, competitors also want to also reproduce uh, other people's results. And then since we have a community here, we try to select as representative of workloads as possible. It is in there, you know, everyone's in interest to, you know, spend the engineering efforts to really focus on the workloads that really best represent the production use cases and bring the best benefits to their customers. So the third one, we want to encourage innovation to improve the state of our ML. You know, in this case, it doesn't have to be like a really fancy, you know, lay, latest model that no one have ever think about. It's, it could be just, you know, writing down the heuristics and, you know, really clarify the workflow to improve the automation or in, improve the overall efficiency of the ML task. And also accelerate, we want to accelerate progress in ML by fair, useful measurement, as Peter mentioned before, and I have some data later as well. So we have seen like a vast improvement in the best time that recorded for the ML perf training and inference benchmarks, and we have more and more results. Even if you see the same hardware being used across versions, the results to generally get better in the next version. And also we want to serve both commercial and research communities. That's why we want to have the open division and also many other benchmark in development, maybe beyond the ML of inference to really capture the latest development in research and give people a common tool and common methodology to showcase their research improvements.
And also we want to keep the benchmarking affordable so that all of them can play. So depending on benchmark, I think we actually have all the benchmark models and steps and reference models on the GitHub so that everyone can access. And hopefully and continuous work from the community. We lower the barrier to entry so that everyone can submit results to the mobile. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what's specifically in MLPerf inference. Okay, so to start, what's the inference? So in this case, we have an input, we have a train model, for example, ResNet, and we have a result. So of course, we measure the accuracy of the model using the large data set to make sure that the model has a good quality in terms of accuracy. And Peter mentioned we have closed division and open division. And in the closed division, we focus on apple to apple comparison. So that's why we need to specify the model in the closed division. In ML perfect inference workloads, right now we have two main separate suites. Uh, okay, I guess in this case, we have three. Uh, the first table captures the workloads in data center and edge inference category. And the second table captures the workloads in the mobile inference category. And uh, you can see that we try to cover, especially on the data center edge side, we try to cover as many use cases as possible. It includes vision, speech, language, and uh, recommendation models. And also we have a, you know, more benchmark baking. And there's also tiny ML, which I, I want to go into detail here, but you will hear about it later possibly. So the idea is that we have a good, want to have a good coverage of different use cases in commercial in inference deployment scenarios. Okay, so I think there's many contribution that ML perf inference make uh, to the to general ML field, but the four measurement scenarios that we define really, in my mind, is really the biggest contribution to the inference community which uh, means that we turn the heuristics and everyone is trying to have a four different measurement scenarios so that we have measurement methodology that best captures your use case of deployment scenario as closely as possible uh, in a very succinct fashion. So in these four scenarios, we have single stream. Uh, the first one, uh, you can think of it's a latency focused measurement and data is sent one after another, and you only start the next inference after the first inference is finished. So this is a latency focused measurement scenario. Then the second one, what we call the multiple stream or multi-stream, you can think about like you have a multiple inputs in a arriving a regular intervals, and you want to see how many stream that you can support in your hardware. In this case, you can think about multiple camera driving assistance system where you can have multiple data inputs and you can try how to test your hardware and software to see if you can sustain eight cameras at 30 hertz or 16 cameras at 30 hertz, etc. So the third one is trying to capture the data center server use case in scenario where the inference arrives at a relatively random fashion. And uh, you want to perform the inference in real time. Uh, that means like you have a service level agreement of X millisecond, depending on the workload. And you are trying to within the latency bound. And last case, we, we call it an offline scenario. You can think of as a batch processing where you don't care about the inference speed per data sample, but you want to go through the data as fast as you can. So for uh, different scenarios, we also define different metrics. So the first one, since it's latency focused, we measure the latency. The second one that I mentioned earlier, we want to know how many streams we can possibly support on the system subject to a latency bound, which is typically a frame rate in this case. And then the third one is the queries per second subject to a latency bound. The latency bound here refers to the SLA of, you know, uh, maybe 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds, depending on the workload. And lastly, we just will want to measure the throughput. And in this case, there's no latency requirement at all. You just measure the, the highest image per second you can get in the system as an example. So after talking about the different use case scenario, I also want to talk about what are the uh, flexibility we provide for inference submitters to recognize, you know, there's a great range of software and hardware solutions. 
right? So we said in the close division, we have a common set of weights that you, everyone have to use. And then another great contribution we provide to the community is called load generator, which is a piece of software which generates data samples, which and the times the inference for the system on the test and validates the inference result by measure the inference speed as well as measure the accuracy for the inference outcome. So with this common tool and a common model, we allow the uh, submitters to re-implement some hub object to a very comprehensive inference rules, which is also on the GitHub. And uh, in this case, as long as you use the load, gen, a load generator and the, the common set of weights, you have a lot of flexibility in your sub submission in terms of software and hardware choices. So we want to, to recognize the, the, the popular use of quantization in inference, but we don't want this amount of inference to be a quantization context. So in the closed division, we allow people to uh, do post-training quantization, and you must uh, submit a reproducible workflow in your submission. And uh, also we provide a fixed set of calibration data to provide more consistency in everyone's quantization steps. And then we don't allow the model to be re retrained, right? So, but sometimes if we want, we also provide a retrained intake mo models to make sure that everyone kind of have the same in intake model to use if needed. Okay, so the next one I'm talking about is, you know, if you are interested to submit to a non-perf, what is a typical submission workflow? So let's look at a typical workflow by the week number. So assume that we have a submission deadline in week zero and we work backwards. We generally have a code freeze and rule freeze like six weeks before and we generally freeze a benchmark implementations 12 weeks before. So that give people about 12 weeks to do the optimization and for the submission. And then after the review, we have a review committee, as, which is very similar to what people uh, Peter mentioned in the training side, to peer review each other's submissions by among other submitters. And then a month later, after submission, we publish the result on the ML Commons website. So I'm going to talk about what are the ideal workflow by different players in MLPerf. Here I put ideal because you know it's uh, really the ideal scenario that sometimes you know things get late and things get moved around a bit, but this is really the goal we are trying to achieve. Okay, so before the benchmark list freeze, we try to get uh, external advisors from non some some permitting companies or organizations to give us some suggestions about which benchmark to use so that we have captured the latest industry requirements while also preserving some neutrality in the benchmark selection. As a submitter in the blue part, I think if you're interested to submit, you should really read the current rules to understand, you know, what you can do, what you cannot do before as early as possible. And then between the benchmark freeze and rule freeze period, you should really attend our weekly submitter meeting to discuss detail the rules, model implementations, and you should also develop your own software in the meanwhile. After code freeze and the rule freeze, we generally don't allow to add new rules for that version. I would encourage everyone to clarify the existing rules if they're not clear. And here, I think the submitters really spend time to tune their software for hardware, right? Because we have very specific latency targets in certain scenarios. And then we have a tool called a compliance checker to make sure that your submission has all the required files for the information or for the logs that need to be collected. You should like try to run the tool as early as you can to avoid last minute scramble to find certain files. And then we also need the submitter to sign the CLA with the amount of comments. And in this case, we also need to make sure that some submitter have their own internal process to release their software before deadline because the deadline is there for everybody. We cannot accommodate software released after the deadline, just to be fair with uh, for everybody. And also, after the submission, the submitter generally focus on uh, their marketing messaging and marketing plan to get ready for the re results publication. And then, you know, you should really attend the weekly submitter meetings because there's a lot of nuances in the ML perf rules. And, you know, we try to capture as much as possible on text, but, you know, as the ML is still a not uh, super mature workflow, there's always 
questions that need to be clarified. Okay, so I want to give a quick summary of the in inference results, which is V0.7 in last year. So we have 23 submitting organizations, so over 1,200 peer review results. And it also grow twice from the first round that we have. And we double the number of applications, that means the, you know, the models in the street. And also we introduced mobile last year. And so I think it's already available, a mobile app. And then we have randomized third-party audits for rules compliance. So those are the high-level information we have for the last round of submission. You can see that we have a lot of support in having many submitters and many peer review results. So we actually just closed V1 for the all submission this year, and we're going to publish our results soon. So I encourage everyone to look out for MLPerf-related press coverage for 21, which is coming up. Okay, like how to get involved? This Google search ML Commons website and there's a Get Involved link. And we always encourage more people to join us and give us feedback and see how we can all we'll work together to make ML benchmark more easier and better for everybody. And I think that's all for my presentation here.